Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel for another content creation tutorial. If you are new here, welcome. My name is Laura. I am an illustrator and a content creator and you can find me on Instagram, TikTok and Pinterest by the name of Laura Jane Illustrations as well as here on YouTube where I create tutorials and videos to show you how I create my content for my other platforms as well as show you a little bit behind the scenes of how I illustrate and run my freelance business. I recently uploaded a tutorial where I showed you how I use Procreate to create my own Instagram story templates so that I have story templates that are unique to me and my style, but that I don't have to create everything from scratch every time. You guys really enjoyed that video. So today I am making another version of it where I show you how I use Procreate to create Instagram post templates. So templates for creating carousel posts as well as just regular squares that allow you to share information in a way that is fun, exciting, visual, but also um, valuable to your audience. So let's dive into today's tutorial where I'm going to show you how you can create your own Instagram post templates so you don't have to be relying on Canva and risking posting something that isn't exactly the same style as several other people on the internet. Let's go. So as I've shared in other Procreate tutorials, my Procreate gallery is full of content that I have created for Instagram. I rarely delete a canvas because I love to duplicate them, edit them, give them a refresh or create posts like this that work as templates that can just have the colors changed out or the fonts changed up and can be reused again and again. I've been using this question box style post for years on my page and today I'm going to show you how you can create your own one so that you can do exactly the same. To start out I am setting up my canvas. Today I'm using a 1-1 ratio canvas but if you'd like to create a vertical canvas in the 4-5 format it will still work. I'm choosing my background color and then on the layer above my background, I'm gonna go ahead and illustrate some details and patterns in my style and branding just to give this template my personal touch. Obviously what you do with this decor layer is completely up to you and your style and your branding. So if little daisies are not in line with your branding, you do not have to use them. Just create or doodle or illustrate whatever fits with your style. Once I'm happy with the background layer, I'm going to go ahead and add a new layer above that. And then I'm going to switch over to my monoline brush and start creating simple shapes that I can use to build that question box shape. So I'm going to use quite a contrasting color for this so it's easy to see where my shapes are. Um, and then once I've built the box, I'm going to change the colors to fit with the background that I've chosen. So first of all, I am turning the size of that monoline brush right up and I'm gonna create a basic rectangle using my shape tool. And because I've turned the size of the monoline brush right up, it's going to create an almost rounded edge to the rectangle. Then I'm gonna use my resize tool in the freeform mode to stretch and resize that rectangle to get the shape that I want. Now that I'm happy with my rectangle shape, I'm gonna go ahead and center it to my canvas and I'm gonna add a new layer where I'm gonna create a circle shape. I'm gonna fill this and then position it on the rectangle and resize it a little bit until I'm happy with how that silhouette looks and I think it looks pretty much like that Instagram question box. I'm duplicating that circle and inverting the color so it's white. I'm gonna center it to the first circle and this would be where the little profile picture would go um, or where you can put your little logo. Now that I'm happy with the base shape, I'm going to merge the layers together and then I'm gonna duplicate it so that I have a layer to use as a shadow layer. I'm going to center the question box together as a group. So with that circle added, centering it better to the canvas. And finally, I'm gonna go ahead and change the color of that silhouette so it matches the background of my canvas a little bit better. So I'm using a clipping mask here to make sure that I get a perfect fill with no black lines left around the edge of it. Then I'm also going to fill the shadow layer with a slightly darker color, turn on linear burn color mode and then I'm going to slightly offset it to the box above and use my Gaussian blur to soften the edges, also turning down the opacity a little bit as well to get a lovely soft 
shadow look. Next is time to create that little rectangle in the middle of the question box where our followers would usually tap on our stories to put in their answer. So I'm creating a new layer again, picking up my monoline brush and again using my shape tool to create a rectangle with my brush size turned up so it has a little bit of a softer edge to it or a rounded corner. Um, I'm going to fill that rectangle out and then position it to the center of my original question box shape so it looks exactly like what we see when we add a question box to our Instagram stories. Next I'm going to add a little more branding by adding my logo to a layer above that little white circle we created where our profile picture would go. If you don't have a logo stamp or a logo, you could equally add a new layer above that circle and use a clipping mask to clip your actual profile photo onto that circle. So again, it looks exactly like a question box that you would post on your Instagram stories. The final step that's left to bring this question box template to life is adding some text layers where we can type in the question that we're asking our audience and a little text layer inside in that answer box where we can prompt them to leave their answer in the comments underneath the post. I'm using text layers for this because it means that when I want to duplicate this canvas in the future, I can easily edit the question and the prompt because these are text layers and they will remain editable. Then the very final thing that I like to do when I'm creating any post template is using my watermark stamp to add my handle to the bottom of the post. This means when I post it, if someone reshares it, my own Instagram handle will always be on the post and people will always find their way back to my page. Now, if you want to create something a little bit more engaging for your audience, I'm going to show you how you can take this simple one, one canvas and turn it into a carousel post template. So I'm going to duplicate that template that I just made and I'm going to use my resize canvas settings to triple the width of this post and I'm using my snapping guides to pull my new sized canvas so that question box remains on the far left side of this canvas. What we end up with here is one single canvas that would hypothetically be three squares or three pages of a carousel post if we posted it on Instagram. This allows us to preview what the carousel looks like as a whole and it also enables us to create a seamless effect when people swipe through the carousel. To help us really achieve that seamless effect, we're going to turn on our canvas guides and then we're going to use the resizing grid slider to turn the canvas guides up until they create a really clear division of three squares. So we can still center things to each square, but we can also clearly visualize where each square of this carousel would begin and end when it's cropped down. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new background to my carousel. So adding back in those daisy illustrations, but this time trying to spread them out across those pages of the carousel so that when people scroll through it, it really creates this seamless effect where one page will continue into the next. Next, I'm going to go ahead and edit the prompt on that first text box because instead of encouraging my audience to answer the question, in the comments down below, I'm now going to encourage them to swipe through this carousel to see the answers that they shared when I asked this question on my stories. Then because we're working with so many different layers and we're trying to create three different pages to this carousel, it's a good idea to go ahead and group the layers of the first page of the carousel together and rename that group so we know exactly what that group is and which part of the carousel it is. Now I'm gonna start working on the next page or the next slide of this carousel. And what I want to create in this template is a way for me to present information or statistics from questions that I've asked my audience on stories so they can see the breakdown of who has said what. So what I'm gonna do on the second page of the carousel is use simple shapes and text layers to create a pie chart where I would then add in the different breakdown of the answers to a question that I've asked them.
I've used as many text layers as I can here so that the template remains editable and all I have to change is the percentages, the answers and the data depending on the question that I've asked my audience. I've also gone ahead and created a group with all of these different text layers. So again, I know exactly what is in that group and what part of the carousel it is. Finally, I'm gonna start working on the third page of this carousel. So here's where I'm gonna give my audience some value that they can take away. We started with the call to action, with the question at the start, then we've shared exactly what they said to us. And then on the last page of this carousel, I'm gonna create a template where I can put in a little bit of information on how we can analyze the data that they've shared, what this means, or what their next steps could be depending on what the outlier of that data was. So again, I'm using lots of editable text layers here because I want to be able to easily change this up depending on the question that I've asked my audience and the value that I want them to be able to take away from this. Now that I'm happy with the layout of my carousel as a whole, I'm going to go ahead and get it ready for sharing. So one way that I could do this is saving this three times to my camera roll and then manually cropping it in the Instagram app until I get those three pages to the carousel. However, this way of doing it can be a little bit glitchy and sometimes you don't get that seamless scroll. So what I'm gonna do instead is create a new 1-1 canvas and import that carousel that I just created. I'm using the page assist on this and what I'm gonna do is resize that carousel canvas to fit the height of this square canvas and then one by one crop it down so that each page of the carousel is visible as a different layer on this canvas. So just to repeat that again, I'm pasting in the carousel canvas that I created and then I'm using my resize tool and moving it to fit the canvas so that I see each page of the canvas cropped. So first of all the far left of the canvas then centering it to get that middle page and then pushing it to the far right of the canvas to get that third page. Then I'm going to save each of these layers as a JPEG file to my camera roll. And when I upload these as a carousel post to Instagram, I will have a seamless scroll across the different pages of my carousel. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, found it helpful, and that hopefully it also inspired you to step outside your content creation comfort zone and actually start creating your own posts, your own templates, and not relying so much on templates that have already been designed and created for you in apps like Canva or something similar. If you did like this tutorial, be sure to click that thumbs up button to show me some love. And if you want to see more content like this from me, go ahead and click subscribe. If you have any questions about today's tutorial or there's anything that I didn't cover or you'd like to know a little bit more information about, go ahead and leave me a comment down below and I'll do my best to get back to you. That's all from me today and I'll see you again really soon. Bye.